QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021, Company Preferences, Desktop View, Finance Charge, and General. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. We are in our Get Great Guitars homepage. We're going to go into the Edit dropdown up top and take a look at our preferences. So Edit dropdown and the preferences. We've been moving through the preferences in prior presentations going from the accounting down to the checking. Now we want to take a look at the desktop view and move down to the general preferences. So in the desktop view on the left hand side, we have the My Preferences and the Company Preferences tab is as is often the case. We have the view information. We have the view in one window or the view in multiple windows. The multiple windows allows you to open those multiple windows that we can see. And uh, we typically use that open windows item over here. So I'm going to keep the default there for the multiple windows. Then we have the desktop. Default is to save when closing the company. I think that's going to be, the, we'll keep that as the default as opposed to don't save the, the desktop and save current desktop. And then it says to show page when opening a company file. So when we open the new company file, it's always going to default to this home page. I like that because it, it gives me a nice visual of the home page. It makes me feel good to open to the home page. I've seen it for a long time. But if you don't need the home page anymore and you've seen it enough and you don't need the flow chart of the home page, you can switch up the home page here. Then we have down below, we've got the Windows settings. The Windows settings, if you select these items, it'll actually take you to your Windows setting on your computer. So these will change your computer setting and display settings and the sound settings. So these are kind of outside of QuickBooks, but it's linking you to those items that, that will be useful within QuickBooks. So it's linking you to your settings within Windows. And then we have the company file color scheme, which is nice too. You can experiment with these. So if you change the color scheme, you got this nice little you know color scheme up top. So you can try different colors uh, down here and see what uh, so what that looks like so you can see those changes i'm going to keep the default up top because i want it to be as familiar as possible to as many people as possible so i'll keep the default the plain you know color that's going to be the default color let's go on down over to the company preferences so company preferences we have the select the features that you want to show on the home page now this is the home page here this is a great little flow chart that you can use as a flow chart to see your process as you work through the flow and it has basically uh, more information on the right which might be easier to get to as opposed to some other format of getting to them with the drop downs up top in default mode this is what has been set up in the home page you may want to adjust the home page here so within the customer section which is this top or second section here uh, in here you could say well the invoice has to be there they won't let you get rid of that the sales receipt is going to be uh, th this item. Maybe you don't use sales receipts. If you don't use sales receipts, meaning you don't make any sales, you, all your sales are on account, they go through a receipt, you could take that one out and it won't show there anymore. You have the statement, you have the statements and statement charges. So again, you may not need that tab. You can take that one out. On the vendor side, that's going to be up top. So here's the bills and the pay bills. You might want to uh, take take the intern pay bills out on the vendor side related preferences to show or hide feature icons on the home page you need to turn the feature on or off click a, a feature um, name below to view its preferences so in other words you, you got to change the preferences in order to make an adjustment to the home page so if you click any of these items it'll take you to the appropriate area so that you can turn it on or off so if i click on that it takes me down to jobs here so i can turn it on or off so I'm going to keep those as is. I'm going to go back up to the desktop view. I'm not going to change any of those items. Let's move on down to the finance charge. Now the finance charge is if we go to the first tab, there's nothing in the first tab in my preferences. Second tab, company preferences. Finance charges are going to be charges that you might have um, on, on basically bill like invoices that you have. If they don't pay past a certain point in time, you might charge penalties and interest on some kind of finance charge related to it. So if you were to do that, most, many companies don't do that. But if you're, you know, if you're in a situation where you, you charge, you know, finance charges, if they don't pay you within a certain time period, then you could say you could set the annual interest rate here to help you to calculate the finance charge. You can have the minimum finance charge. So if they pay a late, you might charge a minimum uh, charge at that point in time. Grace period, you can have a grace period in, term, in terms of days for the grace period. The finance charge account that you would be charging to could possibly be some type of income account that uh, you might be putting in place here. You may have to set up uh, the income account or, uh, or put it, you know, to the normal sales account. 
Uh, we won't be adding financing charges in our practice problem. We're going to keep the default as not having the finance charges. Assess finance charge on overdue finance charges. Assess finance charges on overdue finance charges. If you check this off, you get a little warning that says laws vary as to whether you can assess finance charges on finance charges, meaning you're going to like set, you know, a finance charge on the charge, right? And so it's kind of like almost duplicated. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, calculate charge at the due date or the invoice or bill date. If you were to turn that on, mark finance charge invoice to be printed. So I'm going to leave that as is. We're not going to change any of the finance charges. Let's go to the general. General has a lot of good information that we want to basically look into here. And this is going to be a lot of the information. If you move from computer to computer or desktop to desktop, you could have some changes in the general tab, which, uh, you know, just it's just kind of annoying. You know, you just want to make sure your settings are set up like the decimal. Does the decimal show up automatically or not and whatnot? That's going to be here in the general area. Let's go to the My Preferences first. So in the My Preferences, we have the pressing enter moves between fields. Now, when you start to do a data input into like a form, like an invoice or something like that. Some people like to be able to hit enter and have that basically move through the data input field so they can make their data input a little bit easier. If you don't have that, when you hit enter, it might like record the transaction. Otherwise you would use tab is the normal thing that you would use to, to move through the, through the uh, field. So I'm not going to use the, the press enter here, but if that's something that makes data input a little bit faster to you, it might be well worth doing. We will just use tab to move through the fields. So automatically open drop down lists when typing. I think that's very useful. If you start to type like an account on a, a sales receipt or something like that, when you start to type, then QuickBooks will try to read or think about which account you, you are using and it'll start to limit the list in the drop down to the accounts that are appropriate. That's usually really helpful. It's nice to have that on. It's on by default. Beep when recording a transaction. Now, if you, if you have the sound on every time you record a transaction, it beeps and that kind of gives you a, a audible, audible awareness that you have recorded it. This is kind of useful actually when you're recording to like the bank register where it, whereas if you don't hit enter, if you don't actually record it, it won't actually record it. You have it all entered, but it didn't actually finally finalize. Uh, many people will find that very annoying though, especially if you're entering like a whole month's worth of transactions and therefore it can be quite useful to turn it off because it, you know, it could get kind of annoying, but I'm going to leave it on here. So it will get that nice beep every time that uh, we record a transaction. So automatically place a decimal point. This is one of those kind of picky kind of things that some people really like when you start to enter data. If you just use the 10 key, uh, do you want to just enter the numbers and not have to enter the decimal point to put the pennies in there? Or do you want to hit the decimal point every time you enter the pennies? I'm going to keep the default as off. But if you again, if you work with someone else's computer and they have that on, it's going to drive you crazy. Whatever you're not used to, it's going to drive you crazy because the decimal point is going to go in there automatically. Uh, but it can be helpful if you're whatever you get used to, it seems to me is is best. I'm not sure it saves a lot of time not to hit the decimal, but maybe if, if all your numbers have decimals in it, maybe it saves a keystroke not to hit the decimal every time, but I'm going to keep it as is. Warn when editing a transaction. So whenever you edit a transaction that's already been recorded, it's going to give you a warning. Uh, that's something that you probably want to have on normally, but if you're going to go in and edit a whole bunch of transactions, again, it might take a lot of time and be a little bit of, of annoyance. So if you're fixing something and trying to fix a bunch of transactions, then you might want to turn that off so you don't have to deal with the warning every time. Bring back all one-time messages. So I'm going to keep that default as off for the, for the one-time messages. Uh, turn off pop-up messages for products and services. This is something you probably want to do because there's going to be pop-up messages. You know, QuickBooks will typically you know go to things like pop-ups, like sell-ups. If you need banking information, checks or payroll if you don't have payroll set up. So they might try to basically say, hey, do you want some checks you know, that you could buy to print? Do you want to set up for payroll? I'm gonna keep these on for now, uh, just so that you can see some of those as we work through it. And you'll see when they, when they come up and see some of the normal add-on type of features. You may wanna turn it off, however, because again, they are kind of basically advertisements. Although they are advertisements that are general upsells that you might actually find useful. So you might want to keep it on for a little while and see if those things actually sound interesting, research them, and then turn it off later when you're, you're done. So show uh, tool tips for clipped text. So I'm, one, I'm going to keep that on for now. But again, if they become annoying, you could turn them off later. Warn when deleting a transaction or unused list item. 
So when you're deleting something that's that's in there, like a, a list item or a transaction, it's going to give you a warning and say, like, do you, are you sure you want to do that? I think it's good to have that double check there because uh, you don't want to accidentally just hit the delete button in the wrong place and have something to be deleted. So it's nice to have that double check. I would keep that on. So automatically recall information, automatically recall the last transactions for this name or to pre-fill uh, accounts vendor based on past entries. This is the default. This is a nice thing to have on here. So I will keep it on. And when we enter, when we enter things like bills and whatnot, uh, it'll it, if once you start to to enter the vendor, it'll it'll recall the ba the past transaction and start to fill some of the information, including what's very important will be the expense account, the expense account that you're going to be writing bills to. Like if you write something to Verizon for the telephone account, it's going to remember that you want that to go to the telephone expense instead of having to type in telephone expense each time. That helps you to save time and it also helps you to standardize the process as you can, you know, you, you're less likely to, to, to take the same account going to a different expense account. So that's useful to have. We'll see that in process as we start the data input. Default uh, date to use uh, for new transactions. So use today's date or use the last uh, entered date as a default. So if you are entering stuff currently, if you're using QuickBooks and you're always up to date in real time, then you probably want to use today's date. That would be the best thing to do. However, uh, in a practice problem, we're going to be using dates that are in, in you know the past generally. So we don't, we're not going to turn that on here. We're going to keep the default. Why is the default over here in general? Uh, note that many people might enter a lot of transactions at one time. So you might you might have some, depending on your bookkeeping system, you might be entering transactions basically for a whole month at the end of the at the end of the month or something like that. And if it was always to default to the current day, then you'd have to change the date every time. So again, if you're if you're working real time and you're up to date, you might want to have the today's date. If if you're not, if you're if you're often entering transactions from prior time periods um, as part of your system, then you probably want to keep the default. And that's probably why they have the default as use the last entered date as the default. So then it says keep custom item information when changing item uh, in transactions. So it's going to ask you to do that. And I think the asking again is useful, but if it gets annoying, you could say always or never here, whichever is your preference. So then we're going to go to the second tab, the company preferences. We have the time formats. So show, show parts of an hour. So if we have a part of an hour, the default here in the, in the U S this looks right to me as a 10 and then the colon 12, but you could put a point 12 if that's um if that's more appropriate to to what you're used to and then always shows years in in uh, four digits so the year will show up something like this or you can try to show it in in something other than four digits possibly two digits never uh update name information when saving transactions i'm going to keep the default there same tra same save transactions before printing so that means that uh, when you when you uh, record like an invoice or something like that there's a print button on the invoice you can print it but when you print it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make sure that it, it saves it before it prints. I think that's useful. Otherwise, it's likely, it's possible that you print the invoice and then actually and accidentally do not save it. And so you now have printed an invoice that has not been saved. And then, you know, that could be cause of the problem. So we'll keep the default there. Manage login settings. Log off every time a user closes the company or exits. I think that's the best thing to do for security purposes. However, it could save some time to keep the user logged in. And if you want to do that, then you can you could save some time. Just be careful about securities to make sure that no one else is logging in to your account. So you can keep it open, and then you have the time time range on how long that you would like to keep it open. I'm going to do the, the do the same default up top and and say log off every time the user closes uh, closes or exits. So that's going to be the general setting. We'll move on next time to the to the next items.